Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Tucker Carlson Tonight. As you know, I'm not Tucker. I'm Brian Kilmeade, lucky enough to fill in for Tucker, and here we go. Actor Jesse Smollett said he was the victim of a savage, racist, homophobic attack. Now his story seems to be, let us say, unraveling, and the entire attack may turn out to be a stunt, may turn out to be a stunt, arranged by the actor himself. We'll have all of that soon, right from Chicago, plus an appearance on this show by Tucker himself. Don't ask me how we pulled that off. But first... President Trump has pulled the trigger, declaring a national state of emergency on the southern border in order to fund and build a wall and other things. How did it happen and how will the emergency work? Washington correspondent Kristen Fisher is all around the madness and she's here to unwind it all for us. Kristen. Hey, Brian, well, this emergency declaration is only a few hours old, but already the ACLU says that it will sue President Trump and the House Judiciary Committee has launched an investigation. Democrats on the committee sent a letter to President Trump tonight saying that we believe your declaration of an emergency shows a reckless disregard for the separation of powers and your own responsibilities under our constitutional system. By fabricating an emergency order to bypass the political process for allocating a budget, you appear to be abusing both this trust and your own oath of office. But President Trump predicted all of that when he announced the emergency declaration in the Rose Garden earlier today. The order is signed, and uh, I'll sign the final papers, and we will then be sued, and they will sue us in the Ninth Circuit, uh, even though it shouldn't be there, and we will possibly get a bad ruling, and then we'll get another bad ruling, and then we'll end up in the Supreme Court, and hopefully we'll get a fair shake, and we'll win in the Supreme Court. Now, the declaration will give President Trump about $8 billion to build his border wall. The White House says its attorneys have spent weeks going through the ins and outs of an emergency declaration to ensure that President Trump is on solid ground, and they believe he is. But some Republicans believe it's an abuse of executive power and could set a bad precedent. So this is going to be hashed out in court and in Congress for quite some time. But at least Washington has avoided another government shutdown. Brian, that was set to start in just about four hours if they hadn't reached a deal. Right. Brian? And I just love the way the president went through that because he basically outlined what we're going to be covering and how we're going to be covering it over the next year or so. Kristen, thanks so much. He did. Thanks. Uh, all right. Meanwhile, the president vowed that his national emergency will get the job done and halt the decades-long crisis at the border. We're going to be signing today and registering national emergency because we have an invasion of drugs, invasion of gangs, invasion of people, and it's unacceptable. So we have a chance of getting close to $8 billion. Whether it's $8 billion or $2 billion or $1.5 billion, it's going to build a lot of wall. We're getting it done. Well, he got a green light for at least 55 miles of wall, and then we'll see about the $8 billion. It'll get you a lot more. But CNN's Jim Acosta accused the president of conjuring up a broken border crisis out of thin air. Let me just ask you this. What do you say to your critics who say that you are creating a national emergency, that you're concocting a national emergency here in order to get your wall? I, I asked the angel moms, ways. what do you think? Do you think I'm creating something? Ask these incredible women who lost their daughters and their sons. Okay. They were there with pictures of their loved ones. What an answer, what a comeback. Why does the president keep calling on him? Well, that's the consensus, the media and of the left. Despite millions of illegal immigrants, despite the mess of the border, they think the president made it up. And our border is just fine. The president of the United States is going to declare a national emergency on our southern border. But I have to tell you, it doesn't look like an emergency from where I'm standing. It's not an emergency, what's happening at the border. A national emergency to solve his manufactured crisis. We don't have a national emergency. That's just not true. There is no national emergency. There is no national emergency. Right. There's just simply no emergency there. What are we, stupid? A manufactured emergency. Really? Uh, well, the Migration Policy Institute estimates that 827,000 of the 11 million here illegally are convicted criminals. That's a total of 7%. Not 1% should be in the country. Mark Morgan is a former head of the Border Patrol, and he's heard the rhetoric, but he knows the reality. Mark, is the president making up an emergency? Absolutely not. And Brian, this is the part of the frustration for those of us from a law enforcement, border security perspective. How many more statistics do we have to provide? How many more factually based examples do we have to provide? How many more angel families 
have to stand in front of some of these individuals before they finally say, yeah, okay, this is real. It, it's, it's just incredulous. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's true. And the other thing I thought about, too, Mark, and because I know you served during the Obama years, there was an emergency then. They chose not to act on it. It doesn't mean there's not one now, and it doesn't mean they're not getting worse. I mean, the numbers this year show a huge uh, uh, uptick in apprehensions. That doesn't count the people we don't catch. So when people say to you, uh, the drugs are coming through the port of entry, let's use some technology to crack down there, there's no problem with drugs in the middle of, uh, of the country and other areas not populated, what do you say? Well, that's right. And a couple of things you hit on, Brian, and you're spot on. So first of all, look at the take right now. 60,000 are coming in a month illegally into this country. So this year so far, 62 caravans of 100 or more, 13 of all of last year, 2,000 in one single day uh, th this week. And so the numbers are, are, are climbing, but it's manufactured, right? And the other thing, the other argument on, on in between the ports of entry, it's a absolute false narrative. 60% of the Southwest border does not have enough infrastructure, technology, and personnel. I call that wide open. So they're, they're disingenuous when they talk about the ports because we don't, Brian, just what you said, we don't know what's getting through, but we do know that it is getting through and there's a lot 